it's just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Rachel Mealy. How are you doing today, Rachel? I'm wonderful, Howard. How are you? Good. I've been a, a big fan of yours for a long time. Uh, Rachel Mealy is a dental executive, speaker, and author. Rachel started her career in dentistry as a practice management consultant, traveling to dental practices across the world. She has helped thousands of dentists get and keep patients by improving their online marketing and social media presence. Rachel holds a degree from the University of Hartford, is a distinguished Toastmaster, a member of the National Speakers Association, and sits on the board for the Arts Council of Greater New Haven. Rachel has lectured for more than a decade at dental conferences across the globe, including the American Dental Association, California Dental Association, and for many dental companies, including Align, Technology, Dentsply, Serona, Strawman. Today, Rachel runs the healthcare division for Venelli, Ven Venley, Venley, V E N N L I, Venley, yeah. A voice of the customer platform. Rachel has helped strategically grow Henry Shine, Sunstar, Convergent Dental, Horaeus Calzer, and many others. The reason I tried to get her on the show, first of all, I worked with you. You were at Sesame for like a decade, right? Yeah, 10 years. Yeah. Was I your worst client or just your you, average client? You were awesome. Actually, you had great ideas. And so we love it when clients have great ideas. That makes us even motivated to, to do even better. Nice. So what, the reason I got on the show is because she came out with this book, 365 Days of Social Posts for Dentistry, yeah. is a guide for dental practices to create funny, informative, educational, and most importantly, engaging social media posts. The book was created because Rachel has a mission to inspire the healthcare community to educate one another by innovating solutions that make it easier to stay engaged and connected. Innovations that improve personal health, happiness, and fulfillment globally. This book just does that by giving dentists for the only oral physician in the mouth and all dental professionals are resources to generate ideas. By educating every day through social media and other forms of communication and collaboration, patients around the world can improve their health and happiness. 100% of the proceeds from 365 days of social posts for dentistry are being donated to oralcancercause.org. Send me that link, right? OCC provides financial support to improve the quality of life for oral cancer patients and she's got some amazing testimonials from my buddies uh ed zuckerberg whose uh, son just gave an amazing commencement speech at harvard says yeah. no dental office marketer should be without this valuable too rita zamora an essential for your social media toolbox that's excellent launch pad ideas you can personalize for your practice keep this book handy and you'll never be at a loss for words and then my dental mom linda miles Every dental practice should have a copy of 365 Days of Social Posts for Dentistry. It's a perfect gift for study clubs and dental companies to give as thank you gifts to referring practices and dental companies, uh, customer bases. Uh, I remember the first time Linda heard me uh, lecture at the end. She was just standing back there like my mom. She was literally old enough to be my mom. and She's, she's my like, dental mom, too. She's like, uh, we need to talk. <laughs> 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 and now my podcast it's called Dentistry Uncensored, so it looks like some things have never changed. But, you know, Linda Miles is huge into oral cancer, too. Yeah, uh, she, she's she, trying uh, to help. She's her legacy. What's that? It's her legacy to help in that, in that area. And, and, you know, it's, um, it's really different. I mean, I, I graduated 30 years ago, and 30 years ago, you know, everybody said that, um, you know, all the oral cancer is from smoking and drinking. And um, now it looks like a hell of a lot of cancer um, in the mouth is HPV, same with yeah. um, uterine cancer, ovarian cancer. It looks like this, and it makes sense because it never made sense when I was in pathology because they said, well, all this smoking and drinking and all this stuff, and I thought, okay, well, if I had a room and I just filled it with mice and just pumped it full of uh, smoking and drinking and all that stuff like that, you'd think they'd all die. But that's not what's happening. This room full of mice is dividing every 20 minutes, and you come back a year later, and there's 10 million mice. And I'm like, I, I, I remember saying to my pathology teacher, I said, it sounds like all these toxins are like high-grade fertilizer. And it sounds like huh. sounds like everybody should be smoking and drinking because it just makes cells <laughs> divide. So it so it makes sense that okay, on that is, note, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so it makes sense that something has hijacked the nucleus in a very specific way, and it's not some yeah. random dirty dirty toxin it looks like something sure. like a virus could be hereditary or it could be vi a viral thing or who knows yeah but yeah, there hereditary. are so many patients that are dealing with this and uh it's 
uh, you know, if somebody told me that you could save, uh, the average dentist could save 11 lives in the course of their career by making sure they do a two minute screening. Simple as that. Imagine if all the medical insurance companies said they would stop um, doing uh, pap smears for women, they'd stop paying for it. Oh my God, the women would go crazy. The CEO would lose his job. Yet the same insurance companies won't pay for an oral exam. It's well, it's like, not that long that pap smears have been covered by insurance either. So I think it's just a matter of the right people going and lobbying for the, you know, the things to change. And then, uh, and then it will be accepted by, uh, by everyone. Why did you write 365 days of social post? Um, thanks for asking that that question. Um, and I have to ask you a quick question. I hope you don't take offense to this, but I was I was having a barbecue yesterday, and uh, my friend said, "What are you What are you What are you doing tomorrow? What are you up to tomorrow?" I said, ah, "Actually, I'm talking to uh, Howard Fran." These are my non dental friends, and they said, "Well, who's Howard Fran?" I said. You know, the best way I could describe him is I'd say Howard Franz like the Howard Stern of dentistry. Is that I okay? Want that quote. I want that quote. Just <laughs> don't even ask for permission. Just just write it down, Ryan. <laughs> well, you know, what, what was Howard Stern's uh, book called? Oh, I uh, don't know. His movie, Private Parts. Did you oh, see Private that movie? Parts. Of course. Who didn't see that movie? That was um, good. You know, and what, what I loved about Howard Stern and where he was an inspiration to me is just be true to yourself. And I would go out there and I would give my lecture and I always did stand-up comedy, too. I mean, I've done every comedy club in, in Arizona. You have? Several times. And I go in a comedy club, and the, the owners of the comedy bar say, man, you're awesome. You don't say the F word. You don't say GD. No profanity. No sex. You're just clean. Like, because the biggest comedian. Sorry, wait, they clean. were talking about you? Yeah. But because, <laughs> because I don't. But, but, but then you go, you take that same cleanest act at uh, um, like at um, any comedy place in Arizona, and you take that to a dental convention, now you're the craziest, uh, edgiest, you know, you said fart, you said damn. <laughs> he said he said fart like six times, and he said the word bitch. It's like, bitch, that's PG-13. Are you out of your mind? Listen, and, I got three kids. They're eight, six, and four, so we hear and smell fart every day. I, I know, and so with humans, it's context. I notice the same thing in dentistry, like, you go talk to the dentist at the back of a church, and they're standing next to their wife, and it's just totally, totally one level of conversation. Then you go out drinking with them on a fishing boat, catching uh, you know red bass in, in the Gulf of Mexico, and it's a whole other environment. So, well, not I that see... I want to get political, but look at the president of the United States. Conversation changes depending on where he is. Locker room is a totally different conversation than when he's uh, on the floor. Yeah, so you know, so what I what I learned about Howard Stern is he knew that people who listen to radio all day long were mostly construction workers and truckers yeah. driving around, and he knew they were laughing. But everybody yeah. who owned the station would listen to one person complain, and then they'd fire him, and he wouldn't change, and he'd just pack yeah. up with his wife, go to the next town, or the next one, and yeah. he kept getting fired and fired and fired and fired till finally some boys in New York said. You know, uh, he's got a lot of people that don't care for him, but he's got a hell of a lot more people who think he's funny. And so I yeah. like being the Howard Stern dentistry. I mean, I called it dentistry and okay, censor because I, I don't want to talk about anything that everyone agrees on. I want to talk about the stuff that makes you think. I want to take your mind out for a run. All right. Or in your case, a uh, bike. I see your – what is that called? <laughs> the Peloton. The Peloton. My so favorite. good for you. I'm glad you're on a Peloton because I've had too many friends get run over and killed on uh, yeah. biking on the street. This is... I do run, though, on the street, so that does make me nervous, and I run on a busy street, so you just never know when you get out there. Well, the last time Ryan went running, he had to do a full-body dive into the yard. It was, what, an 80-year-old <laughs> lady? An 80-year-old lady who barely would, could see above the dash cl cross clear over into the incoming traffic and hit the curb and right where Ryan was running, and he dove for the grass. It's like... Uh, and it's so, and I'm out here in Phoenix, all these retirees, it's literally politically impossible to talk about, okay, maybe we shouldn't give driver's license to people once they hit 85 right. or 90. Right. Or make them take a test every year as opposed to what is it right now? I mean, you, you literally could have a, a license forever and never have to be tested again. It's insane. I yeah. mean, I'm saying that now, but when I'm 80 and when you're 80, you're going to be saying, let me keep driving. So it's, it's hard. Well, I'll, yeah. be, I'll be on a driverless Uber car by then. But yeah. Let's go, let's, let's go okay. back, Bo. But why did why did you write 365 days of social posts? What was going on in your journey that made you stop and write that? Well, so it's been going on for over a decade. I've been collecting ideas over the course of my dental profession, 
And I've been putting them in this little folder that I called 365. And I would occasionally share them with, you know, colleagues with, with you as we did your social media and we'd get them posted online. Uh, the best of the best. And you're great at it. I mean, you post great uh, posts every day that make me laugh. And a lot of those ended up in, in the book, as you'll see. Uh, and then I have had on my bucket list for a long time to write a book. It's up there at the top of my list, along with watching my girls give birth to uh, to babies, which they are far away from doing. But that's at the top of my bucket list. And And so one day I said, you know, it's time to get this done. Uh, I hired a research assistant. And that was really what got it got it going is uh, somebody every day who I was working with to make it happen. And and uh, and here we are. It's launching on June 12th, 365 days of social posts for dentistry. You want us to push it out June 12th or do you want us to push it out now? You can push it out now. Yeah, I'll let them know now. We're, we're already, we already have many orders on pre-order because anybody who buys in advance of June 12th will get a signed copy. Nice, nice. Did you talk to Tom Jacoby about writing an article about it in Dentaltown? I didn't, but I, you know, actually that started it all in Dentaltown. Um, probably eight years ago, I wrote an article uh, that was 52 weeks of social posts for, for dentistry. And it was the first time I had published any of those thoughts in any publication. So I give a lot of credit for this book to starting my ideas um, in Dentaltown. Uh, but yeah, I should, I definitely will reach out to Tom and say, hey, now it's time to do another version of that. Well, you know, I've known you for a decade, but for uh, people who don't know you, um, talk about your journey. Journey. How did you get into dentistry back in the day? Well, I grew up in dentistry. My mom ran a lab out of our home when I was a child, and she went on to become a prominent practice management consultant in the orthodontic industry. Her name's Lynn Fales. She's now retired, but she's the one that ultimately introduced me to the dental profession. Never thought I was going to get into the dental profession. I got a music degree and I thought, Howard, I thought that I was going to be a professional concert goer. That was like my dream job. Um, what I quickly learned is that uh, it's a lot better to actually make the money to be able to go pay to go see concerts instead of trying to sneak into them. So we, we switched off of that. But my mom uh, brought me down to a conference uh, in Florida, um, you know, 15 years ago, and uh, she introduced me to some folks. And, and as they say in the dental professionals, I'm sure you've heard before, once you get into the profession, you never leave. Now that's easy for you because you're, you're a dentist, but uh, most executives within dental don't, don't leave, as you probably know. Uh, and so she introduced me to it, and I, um, I went to this dental conference, and I had a doctor come up to me, Howard, and they said, um, you know, they, I was, at the time I was selling a software that my mom had created for inventory control, and she, this doctor said, this is exactly what my practice needs, but I have no one to implement it. Who's going to implement it? And I said, well, gee, I could come into your office and implement it. And so that led me to consulting in dental practices across the world um, and helping them to negotiate with vendors and set up their inventory, organize themselves, get barcodes put in place, teach their team how to make sure that they always had the right inventory. Um, trying to make a long story short here, but the second doctor that I consulted for was the owner of an online communications um, company, Sesame Communications, who I worked for for 10 years. He poached me for two years, tried to get me to come work for him. I kept saying no because I didn't want to move to Seattle. And eventually he said, well, how about you work out of your home in Connecticut? And, um, and so that was 10 years. And then I ended up at Venley, the company I work with now, because Gary Jago, who um, is the the benefactor of the Jago Entrepreneurial Center at Notre Dame and was the original angel investor at Sesame. He started this company, Venley, and he said, we need a dental division. And I said, what's Venley? Um, and I did a little, little research and did some consulting for them and realized there's a great opportunity within the dental industry for, um, you know, for that business. And so today I have my speaking um, business and I have the book and then I also uh, work full time for Venley. So that's how I got into the profession, and here's where I am today. Well, Notre Dame is a very uh, sacred thing for me. I mean, I, you know, I went to Catholic grammar school, Catholic high school, wow. Catholic uh, went to Creighton. Okay. But my mom's brother, um, he actually went to a Notre Dame game, and on the way back to the hotel was so drunk, he sat down on a park bench and passed out and froze to death in the middle of the night. Um, I'm literally, Howard? 
Well, literally, I mean, literally, figuratively. Oh my. He froze. How cool is it to go down, coming home drunk from a Notre Dame game, and freezing it, it was, to death? Did they win? Well, that's what I asked my mom like a hundred times. That was the, my only question. I said, well, did, did they win? And she goes, I don't know. I said, well, who do they play? Tell me more to this story. And, wow. Uh, but anyway, I am going to tell that story at our next conference call for well, sure. You know, it, it's kind of one of those overlooked things. People don't realize that when people go out and get crazy that um, they can pass out of the way and, and do that. Um, some of the, Remember uh, who was ACDC? The night before – their biggest album went out. The guy got drunk and then puked and then asked for his puke and died and never even got to see him. He played pubs for 10 years and right before he was the rock star, he choked to death on his own deal. But So um, public service announcement here. Yeah, right? you know, but you know, I, I want to say you, you said so many profound things. I just want to make note of you, you said that, you know, no one leaves dentistry. You know, you hear so many dentists always whining about their job and they're making $175,000 a year and the average household income where everybody in the house combined makes 50. So they're making three and a half total household incomes. And it's like, I always say to myself, well, you know, buddy, well, why don't you quit dentistry and go open up a restaurant, a dry cleaner, a lawn service, you know, mm. uh, you know, go because when you go my to my dad, those, a pool business. Yeah. When you go to those dental conventions, anybody who quits the job, you just see him at the booth across the, you know, the next year, nobody leaves dentistry <laughs> because the average profit margin in the S and P 500 is 5%. Yeah. That, that dentist, an idiot, could have twenty percent. I mean, I mean, you look at the profit margins in dentistry. You'd have to be Intel or Google or Apple to have those kind of margins. And what yeah. I also love about the, what you saw demand, so you said, so you created supply and said, "I'll go in there and implement and start a company." So many of the young dentists are saying, "Well, should I learn implants or Invisalign or sleep apnea?" It's like, well, dude. What are your existing patients? What do they need? Right. Don't, what are they asking for? Sure. Yeah, don't don't talk to somebody across the country. You're 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 in you know Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. What what do your patients need right there? You know that is yeah. so. And cool. what interests you, right? I mean, don't do something that's not of interest to you. I mean, it's got to be natural. You know, I've said so many times on the show that everybody listening is a millennial. You know, they're all under thirty and all that. But I'm getting so many emails at Howard at Dentaltown.com saying, "Dude, I'm 59. Dude, I'm 64. Dude, I'm older than you." So I want to ask, um, before you get into social media, I'm going to uh, throw you under the bus with uh, what the old guys think. The old guys say, Rachel, Facebook is full of shit. I do direct mail. Every time I do a direct mail piece, I get 15 new patients. Bada boom, bada boom. Um, I think social media and Snapchat and Instagram, that, that's, that's what kids are playing on, on the playground and, and recess. <laughs> what, would you, what would you say to the old guy who loves his direct mail? I'd probably say do you ver diversify your portfolio financially, right? I mean, so if you're putting all your eggs in one basket, uh, probably financially you're not doing as well as the guys who are doing some diversification, right? That's the old rule. And I'd probably say that's the – and I would definitely say, actually, that's the same thing within social – the social media world or the marketing world is – yeah, don't stop doing your snail mail. If that's working and you're getting 15 patients from it, I'll be damned. Keep going. Keep getting those new patients from, uh, from those postcards. But why not get 15 more from social media? We know it works. Um, so, so I'm a mom of three. I already mentioned that, right? And the, it used to be that you go to the soccer field to find out who's the dentist I should go see. Those conversations don't happen on the soccer field anymore. They happen on social media where I can not just get the perspective of one mom, but I can get the perspective of all the moms. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I would tell him, tell all of those, those dentists who maybe are skeptical about it, that they're, they're wrong. And they probably were nervous about doing postcards back in the day, back when they weren't allowed to do any advertising. So for them, it seems dirty, um, but you're doing postcards now and that works. So try something different. That's why we diversify our portfolios because it drives more, um, more dollars in our pocket and more patients in our door. And um, if you had one tip for dental practices to improve their social media, what would it be? I mean, you've been an expert in this for over a decade <laughs> with uh, some of the biggest companies in it. What would yeah. you for, so what you see on a daily basis for the last decade? If you could give them one tip, what would it be? 
Here's what I see happen a lot. So, you know, I'm, you, you already talked about the fact that I, I lecture a lot on social media and I get people that come to my lectures. Probably the same thing happens at your lectures. They leave Howard and they're like, oh, this is the best thing since sliced bread. I'm going to change my practice. Uh, and then the days go by and the weeks go by and they might be motivated for that very short period of time, but it fizzles out. Um, and I would say you need a plan, right? You've got to put a plan in place. You've got to have somebody in the practice that is dedicated to social media. Now, I don't mean dedicated in the sense that they don't do anything else in the practice, but that's their, um, their job. And, um, and then I would say if I had one tip for social media, it was it would be the word engagement. You have got to get your patients engaged. And so if you check off a list, uh, you know, you've got this like checklist and you say, okay, I've got a, I've got a Facebook page now, check, it's done. I've got, you know, I've got the Instagram page now, check, it's done. It doesn't work like that. You've got to make sure that you're engaging with your patients. And one tip that I would have that would help to just start things is to get everyone in your office to like and comment on your posts and all your friends and your family to like and comment on your posts because what happens is patients don't want to engage unless they already see engagement happening. And I, I like to use the analogy, Howard, of uh, – I'm sure you've seen this, a nightclub. You're at a, you're at a nightclub or you drive by a nightclub and there's a long line out the door of the nightclub, right? And why do they do that? Not because there's a million people inside and those people are waiting for someone to come out so they can go in, right? They do it because it, it's all about marketing. You go, oh my gosh, this looks like a great nightclub. I want to get into that nightclub. You might be the only person in there, but you still want to get in because there's a line. And when you start to see there's people having a conversation, there's comments and there's likes, there's other people that are engaged with your social media, more people will want to get into it. So if you've got to create that engagement by getting your friends and, and your dental colleagues and your staff to like and comments on your posts, do it. So you know that'd be my, that'd be you my, know big my tip. dream is of a nightclub? Do tell. I, want create, I have a dream too of a nightclub. I want to create so. a nightclub where the inside – Looks like the outside, and the well, outside. Uh, looks hello, like that's the Vegas. No, that's Night at the Roxbury. Remember that movie? <laughs> Remember the Night at the Roxbury? Will Ferrell. Yeah. God, that was yeah, a funny yeah. movie. Um, so, of the 365 days in your book, which one is your favorite? Ooh, there's 365. I like them all, but I would say if I had to pick one, well, so hmm, that's a tough one. My favorite is, um, it's probably some of the, you know, we're talking about movies, right? There's some really good movies with, uh, with dental clips in them, like Jennifer Aniston. Um, and so Bad I've included, boss. yeah, exactly. That, uh, while there's a little risque in there, like patients dig that kind of stuff. And so rather than try to create your own post, go and look at the stuff that's already out there that you can, um, you can grab and you, I'm, I'm not saying don't create your own post, do that too. But um, that's people, probably one of my favorites. People love edgy stuff one-on-one. -on -one. They just oh. don't want to laugh at edgy stuff in front of their mom and their pastor and their minister. You know, they are at the American <laughs> Dental Association meeting while, while they're wearing a suit and tie. And every yeah. dentist that wears a suit and tie to the dental convention, it's the only time of the year they wear the suit and tie. The rest yeah. of the time, they're wearing an Alabama T-shirt and a pair of shorts and thongs, drinking a beer. Uh, yeah. smoking a cigar while they're grilling brats. And so it, it's, it's just all context with, with people. Um, you know what? When, um, when I was first out of school for the 10 years, it used to really upset me that the American Dental Association wasn't on doing television advertising. I, I talked for years like, how come there isn't an ad during the Super Bowl for one million right. bucks? You know, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. But you know what? Um, I think all of dentistry missed the television era. But now the American Dental Association and so many people – are doing so much um, social media marketing. I think patients today around the world have been educated more about dentistry by legions of individual dentists. Uh, yeah. I, I think more than ever. And also you'll notice that some of the um, newspaper companies are smart, like, like Huffington Post will not run articles that nobody likes or comments or shares. And they have their short list of things. Well, if we write an article on this, it'll get more engagement. And dentistry right. makes their top list. They are always pumping out dental stories, HPV, oral cancer, brushing, yeah. flossing. Yeah. So even the newspapers know that the world's 2 million dentists are so engaged with social media that if any of their headline is about dentistry, out of 2 million dentists, I mean, 
hundreds of thousands are going to repost it and share it. And, yeah. and uh, so I, I, I think social media has been a godsend for dentistry. Yeah, I absolutely love it when there's some edgy conversation. Like um, one of the ones I was just looking at in the book is uh, storing uh, wisdom teeth for stem cell research. And when there's articles like that that are in the Huffington Post or whatever, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that dentists should be sharing with their patients. And um, unless they feel it's controversial, and even then, if it's controversial, it's still shared and say, hey, this is something that's coming out. It's new. It's interesting. And we we want to share it with you because... If you're not going to get it from us, you're going to get it from somebody else. Um, but what types of social media posts do you think get the most engagement, comments, likes, shares, retweets? And by the, by the way, um, is this are, are you mainly a Facebook girl? Or when you say social media, are you also talking about uh, Twitter or Pinterest or Instagram or Google Plus or whatever the hell Snapchat All right, well, I'll, I'll is? Answer, I'll answer that one first. So, I mean, I'm not just talking about Facebook. However... Uh, the majority of the people who make decisions about dental treatment, the moms, right now, this now, and this, if, this, if you watch this podcast again in a year, it might be totally different. But today, the the best bang for your buck is Facebook. And so, if a practice only has limited time or resources, and they want to get started, and they don't currently have social media engaged, I would say get started with Facebook. Although with that said, Howard, we know that there's tools that automate a lot of this and it, you know, you can have it cross over to, you know, Twitters and Instagrams and, and, you know, whatever different social media platforms that you want to be involved in. Um, so no, I'm, I'm not advocating for just one. All of my ideas can be used on any social um, media site, except for the ones that maybe are longer than the typical Twitter post. But yeah, I would say. So if go- social media was a hundred percent, what percent should they focus on Facebook? Then what would be what percent would be number two three four five or whatever so what, what would you what would you prioritize facebook would that be 80 percent? would it be more or less uh in terms of the prioritization i'd put a hundred percent of the prioritization on facebook and then uh once they've got more opportunity more you know there's more room for doing more then i would add in you know instagram twitter i'd go probably pinterest from there linkedin uh, and then we can go down from there now. And that, but the, you know, I'm saying all of this, but at the same time, I'm saying, uh, all outside of social media, I'd be blogging, right? Blogging would probably be the second thing that I would do. And my book talks about writing blog posts and then having those be the posts that you put onto your fit, your Facebook or whatever social media site that so you're they, using. So they click so. it and it goes back to your website. Yeah, it goes back to your website. Drive traffic to your website. And of course, blogging is great because it's fresh, relevant content. And we know fresh, relevant content drives search engines. And now people Google you and they're more likely to find you um, because you've got interesting content. Google likes that. Uh, So, you know, you asked me about social media, but I would put blogging at number two if I was going to pull that into the mix of your diversification. And we're really excited on Dentaltown. Um we got a lot of people who uh, post their blogs on Dentaltown, but we um, we created a, a reshare option so for social media. So now when you read an article in Dentaltown Magazine or you read someone's blog, you you know, the, the greatest compliment you can give is, you know, you wrote that for free. Thanks. If, if you found it interesting, the new like is not um, – is, is just a reshare. And yeah. you look on <laughs> Dentaltown, the reshares are crazy. I was looking at some of the blogs. They, some of them have like – 127 um, um, shares on a, one blog had 127 shares on just Facebook alone, and and they were on what you said uh, to Twitter, to Pinterest, to LinkedIn, to Google Plus, and uh, so all my homies out there listening, you know, we we've never paid anyone to write an article, um, we've never paid anyone to post a blog. So if you, you know, somebody some some of these dentists when they then they write these articles, some of these people will spend a month writing this stuff. If it's a clinical yeah. case. Some sure. of these, some of these cases took years. Some of these dentists could have done this procedure in an hour, but spent three hours doing a filling, photo documenting it, and getting the patient back. And if you read it and you learn one damn thing, you thought, "Well, that's cool." Well, hell, he only did it because he wanted to share it with you. So just reach up and hit the share, share your button. Facebook, your Twitter, yeah. your LinkedIn, because uh, that's the new uh, that's the new uh, economy or the new absolutely just just sharing. It's about making it, you know, trying helping to make it go viral. More people need. If you thought it was interesting, somebody else is going to think it's interesting. Hit the but, share button for well, sure. We're talking about which social media post gets the most comments. I mean, is it about kids? Is it about cancer? Is it about bleaching, bonding, veneer? Are there any subjects do you think that are more important than others? 
Yeah, well, I would I would start with um, remember when we were building, you know, I think I helped you with with two of your your websites, Howard, and so off of the social media for a second. But the single most important page that you can have on your website is the page about the doctor. And do you remember when we built that page, there's a couple of things that you need to have. One is a great personable photo of you, not in scrubs. If you have children, get them in there. If you got dogs, get them in there. Um, and then also the biography needs to be written in a way that is not, you know, I went to school here and I have a degree in this and blah, 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 blah. But, you know, why do you love the profession that you're in? If you can get that across, it's going to be much more likely to attract patients. The same thing applies with social media. It is those posts that are um, personal, engaging. And so it could be that your team is out for, um, you know, a summer, a summer barbecue and you're all, all hanging out. And that's the picture that you post. And, of course, pictures and videos, um, you know, should always be in play over just text by, by itself. Um, so, you know, I mean, the, the boring, actually, I give a good example. I was giving a lecture at Yankee and this woman was at my lecture and she had just posted that she was getting CE credits at the Yankee Dental Conference and she was telling her patients about that. And she was so proud that she was just on social media and she raises her hand up and says, um, you know, Rachel, I got zero likes. I got zero comments. What's the deal? And so I said, like, I stopped the lecture. I said, you know, this is a great learning opportunity. And I had her come up and show me the actual post. And together as a, as a class, we realized, um, one, she had no photo, right? That's, that's the key. And it wasn't fun. So she, the next day she comes back to my next lecture and she is reposted a new picture with her standing next to the uh, the Crest toothpaste guy on the floor of the Yankee convention. And she posted that thing that she was getting CE credits. And now she's got likes and comments and it's, it's, you know, it's getting exposure. Um, so it's those kinds of posts that are going to be, uh, or the, you know, the, you know, the, the videos from, um, you know, interesting movies that have dental clips in it, the book includes all of those interesting things that patients are more likely to engage in. Keep it, keep it fun. You know, what's funny is um, every time I speak at Yankee or Chicago or whatever, they're always whining about how attendance has been shrinking down. Did you see that uh, the ADA announcement the other day where they're going to start consolidating some of their meetings? Yeah, I saw so that. So when they have a national meeting, they're going to consolidate it with, the state meeting or whatever, because, yeah. because, because attendance is a huge problem. Okay. Right. So. And, and, and the, and the manufacturers are, are not willing to, uh, to go anymore. And they, they pay for a big part of the, the, you know, because the cost attendance of, is down. Right? Yeah. Cause attendance so, is down. So right. Let's, so let's just take Yankee, a class example, Boston, the coolest damn city in the world. Love Boston. And when do they have it? January 30th to February 3rd. I mean, if the Pilgrims would have landed January and 30th, they would have turned around and gone back home. I mean, what is this country? I mean, what, I mean Boston in April or May or September, yeah. October, uh, yeah. Chicago midwinter. I mean, I mean, I mean is it the name know, of it is Chicago midwinter. What the heck? I mean, Chicago is another. It's one of the coolest cities in the world. I mean, here's the thing, though, Howard, here's here's where I might disagree with you from. You know, I work with a lot of manufacturers and when we go to Hawaii, so you would argue, oh, Hawaii, beautiful. It's a great location. Everybody wants to If it is nice out, if it's nice out. We do not get anybody on the trade show floor. If it is raining, they come and herd. So I would argue that Chicago midwinter in some ways does make sense because people are less willing and wanting to go shopping and do all the, the sightseeing stuff. They are coming in for a conference, uh, and that works as opposed to, well, here, you know. Here's, here's, here's my spin on here. that. So, uh, you know, Germany, you know, they make, you know, cars like Mercedes, Volvo, yeah. Porsche, America, you know, Chevy, Ford, Chrysler, and you probably have your auto mechanic on speed dial. And uh, um, when you go to the Germany Dental Convention, IDF, all those major booths have beers, bars, yeah. hors d'oeuvres, crackers. I mean, that I agree with. You would right. never have to leave to go to the bar when you're in Germany. I mean, if you if you actually walk the booth from 8 to 5, you'll be in a wheelbarrow by 4.30. <laughs> Every time you go in there, there's a CEO. Can I get you a beer? I mean, yeah. the Germans. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, but those meetings. Uh, they know how to do it. Huh? Yeah, That's they, starting they to change. I'm seeing more of that. But no, there's some there's, something needs to, I wanna, to continue. 
change. I, I agree. Take you down on some details. A lot of people don't want to write a blog because they think they got to write, you know, the the meaning of oral cancer from A to Z. How many words? How many words? And are you know they talk about the, in social media that people have an attention deficit disorder. You know, they're they're just you know cl- flying by stuff. How many words do you think a blog should be? Well, okay. So a blog has two purposes. One is you want to attract people to actually read it, get visitors through your website. But the second purpose, in, which is less important, um, is that you want to uh, write content that's fresh and relevant and that the search engines might crawl and see, right? The World Wide Web are spiders, you know, spiders that are crawling the web and searching for content. And if, they, if you have that kind of content that they can pull up, uh, you're more likely to be found. So while you don't want to write your blogs for the purpose of Google, um, you do want to make sure that you've got fresh, relevant, interesting content. And so, um, you know, I'm not going to say an exact number, but any, any length is fine. I mean, if you only have, you know, a paragraph to say, and that's four sentences, uh, that's fine. Post it. It's better than nothing. If you only have a sentence to say, probably that's better for social media than a blog. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, just, just write and write about anything and just whatever comes from in your mind, whatever your patients are saying in the practice, um, they're at whatever questions they're asking about, everybody's asking about. And so write about it. So well, I, I know you're not a programmer, but um, you might know. But my husband is. Your husband is? So like through osmosis, I might have some programming capabilities in me. Okay, well, I slept at a Holiday Inn Express. You slept with a programmer. So you. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see and who knows three, the answer. Three babies. The, the, yeah, the okay. technical question is, um, you know, search engine optimization and everything. So what if Rachel writes a blog about oral cancer, a thousand words, and I film a video uh, talking about oral cancer, the same length of time as it takes to read the blog. Would those spiders and web crawlers crawl through my video and and search and uh, optimize that, or do you have to have text words before yeah, you a spider do. finds it? You do need to have text words at this point in the video. Like, you know, you've got the, when you're putting a YouTube video up, for example, they give you the option to put a description and tags. And so those words certainly need to be in there. Things are getting um, more complex every day that we will be able to uh, read the, the search engine spiders will be able to read video without you having to say anything. But right now you're always better off putting some content, some text um, in there uh, as well, describing it. And in, did you in see detail. a new f- feature for YouTube where you can, um, you can uh, print out a transcript of your YouTube? That's so cool. It's like Dragon, that, right? Ryan? Yeah. So, so now um, YouTube will put a, a trans. So that's why I wondered if, if that's – I wondered if they were going to start doing that with all the videos doing it themselves – um, in house. Um, uh, another question: you, You're you got three kids. I got four. Uh, that's why I'm 25 percent more insane than you. Um, <laughs> with all, with, with trying to put three kids through college and all that kind of stuff, why are you donating 100 percent of your proceeds to oral cancer cause? So I am donating 100% because, like you said earlier, Linda Miles has been like my dental mom. I've had a lot of mentors in my life in the dental professional, including my mother, my my actual mother, the one that birthed me. Um, But Linda Miles uh, has really inspired me to be the best person that I can be. And I knew when I wrote the book that I wanted to donate it to some dental organization. I didn't know which dental organization I wanted it to be. And I reached it. Linda was one of the first people I reached out to when I finished the book. And I said, Linda, I've written this book and I'd love to get your perspective. And she immediately went into, let me tell you everything I know about the books that I have written and how I've gotten them to be popular or you know, get to the top of the charts or, or whatever it was. Um, and I realized in that moment, I said, you know, Linda, and I had, I had for the last two years, the company I work for, Venley, has been donating a portion of our proceeds to um, oral cancer cause. So I already knew there was that connection, but I didn't make the connection with the book until, I said, you know what, you're amazing. You are so inspirational and your cause is so important. I personally don't know anybody who um, has had oral cancer except for the folks that I have met through Linda's organization. But here's the thing is there are a lot of organizations that are doing uh, they're they're putting the dollars towards research. And that is admirable. I, I 
completely support that. There aren't a lot of organizations that provide financial support to provide those who are dealing with oral cancer some dignity in their life by giving them financial support to help them send their children to daycare so that they can go get radiation or or whatever treatment they need or to help them pay for their mortgage because now they're out of work because of this debilitating disease and they can't afford to pay their mortgage. Um, And that's what oral cancer cause and uh, Linda and Robin and Ed Zuckerberg's uh, organization is doing, and I couldn't be more more proud to um, to support that. You know, um, this is uh, kind of creepy and dark, but I almost uh, you know I graduated from uh, high school in '80, so I was um, the year I was born. Is that right? The year you were born, so I could be I could be your dental dad. So Linda Miles <laughs> got to be your dental grandma then. I didn't want to say that. Uh, no, I bet she'll love that. She probably wouldn't mind. But, um, yeah. But uh, she still looks amazing. Uh, she looks uh, the same age as me or younger. Uh, but the, the, the thing is that, um, you know, when um, gay cancer came out in 78, 79, and then they started talking about, you know, the, the, um, it was a virus and this, and that, and, and Ronald Reagan from 1980 to 1988 never even mentioned AIDS one time. And it was, um, I was in Kansas City which has a huge gay population because you can't grow up gay in small towns in Kansas, Nebraska, and Iowa. So they would all flock to Kansas city and the dental schools right downtown. So, I mean, it seemed like, it seemed like 20% of all the people in the area were gay and nobody was talking about it. And so we lived through that whole nightmare disaster and now the whole planet understands it and they've taken precautions. We're now it's 30 years later and we're back there with HPVs. People go in there and they think, well, if I'm wearing protection, I'm all good. But then they're trading saliva, and and you're seeing this uh, massive increase in people getting oral cancer that are in college, and mm-hmm. and you don't you you see all these n- uh, stories on opioid addiction, but you hardly see any stories telling all these little boys and girls in college, um, you know, um, especially if you go to some of those risque colleges like University of Hartford or something. <laughs> <laughs> where it's uh, insanely risque. But they, they My brother went to Florida State, so you can't beat that. I mean, these, these little boys and girls are going there and saying, well, I'm not going to sleep with them. But, yeah, we made out, you know, we made out, um, we, we made out for an hour. Well, you, you might have cha- exchanged 10 billion microorganisms, fungi, and viruses, and you might have just killed yourself. And nobody's, well, it- nobody's talking about that. Yeah. I mean, it's a, and it's the same thing, and this is you know, completely opposite, but, but it is connected. It's the same reason why when you have a baby um, and you're starting to feed that baby, you don't feed them with the same spoon that you eat from, right? I mean, you, you just, they, they, you sh- it's, the, there's so, mu- so much bacteria that could be contaminating um, their, their mouths so, there. So today's Memorial Day. So yeah. at 3 o'clock, there'll be the big barbecue. And I guarantee you, every or piano little... Bus. Every little girl there in their 20s has got a newborn baby, like Lindsay Lou and baby Raya Rue. And the grandparents will kiss her right on the mouth. The grandpa will kiss on the mouth. They'll pass that baby around. That little baby today is going gonna, is gonna to have to make out with 10 people that have gum disease, partials, and dentures because right. – nobody's right. talking about that, that mouth. Nobody's talking about it. So it's not even what you do while you're at university. It's, uh, it's this little stuff, too, that is ca- – you know, it's it- – so they buy, so they buy this book. So one of my homies, first of all, where do they go to buy this book? Okay, so um, my website right now for pre-order, so my website is www.rachelmealy.com. I see you're going there right now, Howard, to buy your book. Thank you very much. Uh, and I actually, I, I put a, a discount coupon on uh, on the website. So if people are listening to your podcast, and we know they will be, uh, that they can get 20% off the book before it launches, which is on June 12th, uh, by using the code HF2017. So it's HF2017. They'll get 20% off. And all books that purchase, that are purchased before uh, the launch date, June 12th, will um, be signed by the author. Okay, so you got the home. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, – so there it is. There's the book, 365 Days of Social Post. I tried to um, – I was going to – I tried to retweet this, but your Twitter um, is private. You, oh, you, yeah. Usually I, what I do is I retweet the last tweet of my guest. So Because okay. everybody listening right now is either driving a car or um, and uh, they can't take notes. But, so I went to your Twitter, 
I mean, I, I'm I'm really focusing more on Twitter. Now, I know you I are. That uh, you can uh, become the next president of the United States if you have five million followers. Are you uh, going to do that? Well, you know, it, I mean, 2020 Donald, Howard Ferran. Donald Donald Trump is a smart man because on Facebook, I mean, Mark Cuban said it the first. He said I bought all these Facebook ads and all this stuff and built up a million followers. Then he found out that when he makes a post, it doesn't go to all one million followers. He's got to boost the post to push it out to all his followers. And Cuban's like, are you kidding me? Definitely. I paid, yeah. I paid a million dollars to get a million followers. And now but they I, do a good job of getting you to boost though, don't they? Well, that's why Trump is smarter. He's on Twitter. Cause on Twitter, yeah. on Twitter, if you make a tweet, I got 20,000 dentists that follow me on Twitter. And if I make a tweet, it goes to all 20,000 of them. I yeah. got 300,000 fans on Facebook. But if I want that post on Facebook to go to all 300,000 people, I got to give them a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. So so Donald Trump – and Donald Trump taught me another thing. Um, I'm not pro-Trump or I don't like talking about religion, politics, and that stuff. But um, his Art of a Deal was a mind-shocking book for me because I realized back then uh, – and it applies to Dentistry Day that price is never the issue. It's the terms. He said, hell, I'll buy your house for a billion dollars if the term is a dollar a month for a billion months. Because I'll rent your house out for a thousand and make nine hundred ninety nine dollars a month, and you're all happy because you got a billion dollars. And Omar Reed taught me that in dentistry, and I walked out of school. He said, "You know, they, you sit there and you you uh, um, nickel and dime them on well, here's a filling and a crown, and you add it all up, and you say, okay, it's seven thousand two hundred nineteen dollars, you know, blah blah." And Omar said, "It's it's never the price; it's the terms." He said, "What if we did every? What if we just completely fixed up everything in your mouth?" And it only costs you $250 a month for 60 months. Would you do it? And they're like, yeah. Yeah, I would do that. And Omar didn't even have a treatment plan yet. Because That's once great. he knew how much money you could afford, then he would know, was this going to be dentures? Is this going to be implants? Is this going to be crown and bridge? Once he yeah. knew the price, just like when you walk on a car lot, the first thing they got to know is, are you looking for a Lamborghini, a Porsche, a Mercedes? Are you looking for a right. Chevy, a used car, right. a bike? right. Right. And, uh, yeah, so price is uh, just uh, huge. Um, I the company I'm... I work for, Howard, I have to tell you, the company I work for, Venley, we've, we've done, you know, all these studies in dental, trying to understand how dental professionals make decisions. All these manufacturers think that you make decisions based on how much does it cost, right? I'm, I'm only going to buy your product because it's the cheapest product or whatever. And, um, and it always comes in as the least important thing. Right. So, you know, everybody thinks it's about price, but it's not about price. Let, let me let me tell you that the thing that supply people don't uh, understand is that um, you know, the number one overhead in dentistry is the forty-two percent insurance adjustment for the PPO price. Like I charge a thousand dollars for a crown, but all the insurance companies only give me six hundred, so I got to adjust off forty percent. So forty-two percent is what the industry is adjusting off. Next would be labor, twenty-eight percent. Then it'd be lab, ten percent. Yeah. By the time you get to supply, six percent. I mean, who even cares? And the reason um, I think the online ordering has never taken off, because it's been available forever. I mean, uh, everybody thinks it's all going to go to Amazon. Is uh, Patterson and Shine and Ben Cohen Burkhardt, are they all going away? You know, you know, my your supply rep um, being able to call Valerie and say, hey, I got it. I got it. Uh, you know, I'm out of this. You know, well, what's going on? And her to drive by and put a box on the counter. No one cares. And your dental assistant to do all the online ordering is if she's not completely snowed under is as, as if she doesn't got a million things to do and a million things to buy. And now you want her to just sit there and start uh, uh, flipping through uh, online on Amazon and saving 12 cents on gauze. Like that's really a good use of her time. Right. And, and the other thing about the um, we talk about social media, the thing that, that these manufacturers don't realize is that dentists are very brand loyal. And you know why they're brand loyal? Because you got to do root canals, fillings, crowns, dentures, partials, but you got to do everything. So if you got something working and someone comes in and says, hey, how would you like to try a new uh, impression material? Get it's out of here. not broken. I've been using 3M SP. I mean, I used to use Impergum from SP. It was made in Germany, then 3M. I've been using Impergum for 30 years. You know why I use Impergum for 30 years? Because that's not a problem I have. I, I yeah. had other problems through the years. And some sometimes you're looking, you know, so... You're just trying to solve that one area that's a problem. You don't have, you don't even have the, the, I mean, if it ain't broke and you fix it and you're a general dentist, you're an idiot. And yeah. if you change the impression materials to save 10 cents 
and now you have remakes. I mean, it's the same thing with labs. I mean, uh, and, and I look back and I wish the only thing I would have done differently is I, I, I'm so jealous of the specialist because they only have to learn one thing. I mean, you know, an endodontist. I saw your post about uh, orthodontists, what, 600000 a year. And uh, yeah, so, hey, it's never too late to go back to school, Howard. Well, it's, it's just really hard being a family physician because you have to learn so many things. And so that's why they are brand loyal. And I remember yeah. talking, do you remember, do you remember John Miles? The, um, he was the uh, CEO of Densply for like a decade or so. He lived out near you on Chesapeake Bay. Do you remember him? I didn't know him, no. Yeah, he was a, I, I loved having dinner with that guy. He was the CEO of Densply for a decade. That guy was so smart. He had the biggest boat on Chesapeake Bay. He had one of those stand-up really? boats with the four engines. Because his wife was from uh, um, Puerto Rico. Yeah. And that crazy man, when he was in Miami, he wanted, you know, and she wanted to go visit her mom. They, they took his boat across the ocean. I mean, uh, this guy was awesome. this guy was crazy. And he was so smart. And he used to say that. He said that they, they don't look at price. They just look at, does this work? And the only thing they're interested in looking at and learning more about is in an area where they have a problem. And if they have a problem, yeah. they, they, they'll open their mind. But he, he said dentists were more brand loyal. Uh, than any industry that um, he'd ever studied. I noticed there are a lot of dental holidays in your book. Explain what a dental holiday is. Okay, yeah. So there, there's there's holidays like Hallmark days. So so when when Hallmark, you know, created. By the way, my my aunt that I was named after worked for a, a, one of the first greeting card companies. So when they decided, hey, we want to do more more marketing beyond Christmas and, and, you know, some of the traditional holidays that you might get a card for, they started making days up like grandparents day. Right. I mean, that was basically created by Hallmark. So today there are these holidays that are dedicated to, you know, to dentistry. Like, you know, there's literally a day for, for dentists, dentist day and love your smile day. And, um, you know, I mean, there's, every day has, has a day. There's a junk food day. There's embrace your geekiness day. There's a lookalike day. Um, and so the dental holidays are those days that are just about, about dentistry and what they're like the perfect day to post something about social, social media. Cause it's a day dedicated to dentists in March. Uh, let's make sure that we dedicate that post that day to how wonderful those dentists are back to it being, you know, personable and, um, you know, connecting with those moms. You know, um, I went to UMKC Dental School in downtown Kansas City. It was across the street from the Hallmark Center. So there was a, uh, it was UMKC Dental School. Across the street was the hospital, the med school, and then Hallmark. So when you went to a bar, you know, it was about a third, a third, a third. And those Hallmark people, they were so different than dentists. I'll never forget talking to this girl at a bar, and she reached up and scratched her head, and her armpit hair was dyed blue <laughs> and had a bead in it. And it was amazing. These guys would work. I'd say, well, like, what do you do? And he says, well, I've, I'm, I'm, on a, I'm on a timeline. Um, I have to make a card every three months. And I thought, wow, what a wow. job. He makes yeah. four cards a year. Wow. And if one of them hits, it's just out of the it ballpark. It blows up. Oh, my so God. So my, my aunt that I was named after, you know, Rachel. So my aunt Rachel, look, I've got pictures of her um, all over my desk because she is my inspiration. She died when I was seven. Uh, but sh I just learned this. So do you, are you doing Ancestry.com at all, Howard? Have you I done am. that? I am. Okay. My mom is retired and it's her new favorite thing is to do Ancestry.com. And so she just sent me this article about my aunt that I'd never seen before. And apparently my aunt helped to create the zip code as we know it today. Wow. You want, you want to know the key, the, the secret to Ancestry.com? Yeah. What city is Ancestry.com in? I don't know. Salt Lake City. Okay. So of all the Christian sects, that says heaven just in or out. But the Mormons, it's a little more complicated. They have different levels. Yeah. And so yeah. one of the ways to get more points or whatever is um, knowing your ancestry. You can convert oh. someone and you can back baptize whatever. I don't know the, all the details of that. But the Mormons have been obsessed with ancestry for hundreds of years. So Arizona is like. Uh, Phoenix Mesa is like, you know, South Utah. So I go down to the temple there and I went into the temple and I found uh, where they have all these uh, records and I found some little old lady and uh, I asked her if she would do it for me. And she said, yes, but she wanted $4 an hour. And I said, all right. So I gave her a Benjamin and then, it turned, doesn't out, matter. then it turned out <laughs> later she wanted to uh, get a new upper denture and a new lower partial. And then I told her, you know, those are 1500 arch. Basically I got, 
Yeah, I got the rest of her life's work. And wow. um, they're just, uh, I mean, it, it's amazing. And because and, you need, it's a science behind it. You can't run a program to do it because the problem you have in ancestry is that um, 1880, 80% of the planet can't read or write. So all these people walking through uh, sure. um, uh, Ellis Island, they'd say, what is your name? And you'd say, Mealy. And you might spell it three different ways than your cousin. And then right. in 1880, all these churches started these um, using the church on the weekdays as a one-room schoolhouse. And nobody would give up their boys because the boys were needed for farm duties. Working, sure. So they'd only give up the little girls who couldn't do any farm tasks. So all these little six, seven, eight, ten, these little girls. So they go in there and they teach them phonetics. And then they say, okay, your last name is Smith. How do you spell it? Well, however she spelled it, that's your name. And, that's that's, my name. and so you have to realize, okay, are you related to this Johnson? Oh, well, no, it's got a T. You don't have a T. Oh, yeah. yeah. It shows up in the database the first time in your family. Right, right. In right. this county in Ohio, and it shows up three different spellings in the same five year period. So yeah, you're all you're all cousins, and it's That's really exciting. neat. I mean, I just I just love. It. I thought it would be uh, I thought it'd be really neat, but it, but it turned out. I mean, we're all Irish. I mean, it, uh, two grandparents, four grandparents, eight great great grandparents. I mean, uh, and just all roads lead all back. Irish. To, uh, yeah, all right. All, all at eight lines. It all led back to the potato famine, eighteen fifty. A ah. million Irish washed up on Boston. That's why yeah. Boston is the greatest city in America, is because it's it's all Irish. Uh, I just took my kids to the uh, Irish Famine Museum that's here in in Connecticut. So d- dedicated to just uh, just that. So next time you're in Connecticut, I'll take you there. You would think I it's, did you know, not even know it existed. It is fascinating. It's right by Quinnipiac University, which is very close to where I live, beautiful campus. Uh, and it's about 800 square feet, so it is small, but it is a uh, quite, you know, it's, it's quite the history. And uh, the artwork is unbelievable. The message is unbelievable. And so if you're here in Connecticut, Howard, you let me know, and I'll take you there. So you know why they were the most hated immigrants? Tell me. Because everyone who left Europe before the Irish was leaving the Catholic Church. They were all protesting the Catholic Church. They were Quakers, Episcopalians, Lutherans. They hated living under this Roman Catholic monopoly in Europe. And so every every city was found by some religious Protestant protesting the yeah. Catholic faith. Right. And here comes a million Catholics building their Catholic churches. <laughs> the whole reason everyone left, and here they come. And my great-grandmother... Uh, who died at like 101, had this sign that they stole from New York City, said, help wanted, need not apply if Irish. And they told them, everybody hates you in New York and Boston. you got to go inland. And so her, her father went all the way to Ohio. But then so many Irish made it to Ohio, they pushed farther into Parsons, Kansas. And then they'd, and that's when they'd start lying and tell everyone they were German. Oh, just to get work. Oh, yeah, that was the deal. You couldn't get work as an Irish. You had to lie and tell them you were, you know, German wow. or British or Scottish or something. You couldn't tell them you were a low-life Irishman. Um, <laughs> so um, do you think you'll ever write another book? I always say that, you know, you have three kids. I always say that writing books is like having a kid. I mean, it takes you nine months. It's just, it's the or same Or ten one. years. Or ten years. <laughs> do you think you'll ever write another one? I think I will write another one. Um, and, you know, I think I'm on to something. There's been a lot of popularity. I haven't even launched the book. Right? I, by the way, our launch party is with um, Centrix Dental. It's going to be at their headquarters on June 12th. So if you want to come join my face, our Facebook Live at 1, one, 1 o'clock Eastern time on June 12th, we're giving away books and Centrix is giving away product. Uh, but I think I'm onto something because we've already got um, a lot of orders just pre pre the launch, and so I think it could apply to the broader healthcare industry. And so while I say I'll never get out of dentistry, and I never will, there might be one foot that helps some of the other industries with their social media because it could flip right over to them just as easily. Um, I just retweet you work for um, Venali. It's Venali. Ven- Venly. So Venly. think Venn diagram, right? The Venn diagram. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Venn, Is that what it's Venn with the Lee at the end. Venly. Yeah. Was it named after the Venn diagram? Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. So I just retweeted uh, their last tweet. Um, but uh, what, 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 uh, oh, I don't want to throw a sesame under the bus, say, why do you leave them uh, after a decade? But, but why, why you could have worked anywhere in dentistry. Why did you go to Venly and what is Venly and their Twitter 
is at V-E-N-N-L-I app. Venn, like the Venn diagram, Lee yeah. app. Yeah. And I just uh, retweeted uh, um, your last tweet. And I do that because they're driving. So all they got to do is go to at Howard Fran and then they'll see um, this uh, at Venley app. But what is Venley? And why did you go there when you could have gone anywhere? Okay. Well, and I will answer the question on my left, Sesame. I had an amazing 10 years at Sesame. I think they're a great company. Um, and they were acquired. And uh, and Gary, who was the um, – so when I was an executive for Sesame, he was the chairman of the board. So we got to work together a lot. And Gary is now the CEO of Venley. And he said, hey, I need a dental division at – uh, at Venley, and it was an opportunity to work with um, not just dentists, but dental manufacturers, and so to broaden sort of my perspective, and at Sesame, I've been doing business development and had a lot of relationships with different um, dental manufacturers, and I felt like I could bring something to them and helping them understand how do the Howard Frans of the world make decisions to, to, to buy buy product, how do, how do dentists make decisions, and how can you market your products better as you're launching a new product? Um, so like Centrix, for example, we help them to launch a new product and doubled their projections by, you know, really understanding how dentists make decisions. And when you put a message in front of Howard that resonates with him, he's much more likely to take action than if you tell him something, you know, that's not of interest. Well, of course, he's not going to pay attention. Um, so Venley does surveys to help um, manufacturers understand how customers make decisions and it helps with uh, product launches and uh, growing new products and also um, mergers and acquisitions. So we're part of a lot, a lot of times when you're trying to combine two companies together, it's well, what's, what's the future going to look like. And, um, and we help them through voice of the customer, this like reliable voice of the customer mechanism, understand how uh, dental professionals make decisions. I just run their dental division, so it was also an opportunity to run an entire division. Uh, that you know, like Venley itself works for companies like BMW and LinkedIn and Dunkin' Donuts, uh, but the the uh, dental piece is 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 just my my baby. So well, it was an opportunity you, you to do more in dental. Invisalign, right? Um, we don't work for Invisalign. No, we don't. And we haven't done work for Invisalign. So if Joe Hogan's listening right now and, uh, you know, needs some voice of the customer, we're here for you. <laughs> well, well tell, tell us what, so what, um, do general dentists um, use Venley? We don't actually go direct to dental professionals. No. So all the work we do are for dental manufacturers. And that's not to say that we won't eventually help uh, dental professionals, but today uh, the majority of our work is uh, now with that said, we do quite a bit of work for DSOs. So where they've got, you know, large populations of patients that they're trying to understand how do we get more patients in. Uh, but we haven't done any work for a solo dental practitioner as of yet. No. Can, I, can I give you some advice on how to help the DSOs? Yeah, sure. Well, in healthcare, health, health physicians are, you know, dentistry is 5% of the healthcare budget. The physicians are the other 95. So there's a huge, larger pool of examples to steal from. Just like I've stole every business idea I've had from the S&P 500. I've never had an original idea in my life. And so dentists should steal from healthcare. And, and when I tell you that you have two cavities – and you need a root canal, you don't, you don't know if that's true or not. And it's so right. stressful. And in yeah. healthcare, like Mayo Clinic, the Cleveland Clinic, the Scripps Clinic, their whole branding is trust. We're, mm -hmm. we're trust. You come here, you can trust us. I'm going to go all the way to Mayo Clinic. I'm going to go all the way to the Cleveland Clinic. I'm going to go to Sloan Keter in New York. I'm going to the Houston Center. I'm going, and then dentistry is like, oh, get a cleaning exam and x-rays for forty nine ninety nine, and bring in a coupon and get four dollars off it's just price right. price price right. price sure. and then they go in there to these clinics on price 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 and some dentist who usually looks like she's about 18 years old and couldn't get a job as as a bartender says well you need you have six cavities and it, and it's the same feeling when you go to the um get your oil change and the guy comes out and says, well, we did the 1999 oil change, but we think you need a new air filter and you need to flush your transmission fluid. And you're just sitting there right. like, 
I don't There's know no if way. that's true. Yeah, I'm, I'm and, skeptical. And every time my air conditioner, you know, I'm in Phoenix. If my air conditioner goes out, I'm a dead man. As soon as I run out of water, yeah. I'm dead. And every time an air conditioner guy comes, it's like, Your cousin well, you know, freezes to death, Howard burns you, to death. Oh, yeah. you, you need a new air conditioner. And that's why I wait like seven days for my guy because my guy is uh, Wendy's friend. You know, it's a friend of a friend of a friend. I, I, I know his sister. And everybody uses him. Because I don't care if I need a new air conditioner or you can fix it. I just don't want to get taken to the cleaners. And yeah. the DSOs need to start branding like Mayo Clinic, Cleveland. Yeah. You know, they yeah. need to be uh, on trust. And, and, yeah, and it's, I love that. Yeah, I mean, they just need to go to trust. That's a really good point. And, and have that, you told they, them that? I mean, you must have relationships with those guys. Have you told them that? Oh, absolutely. And, okay. Uh, absolutely. And everybody needs to know it because uh, it, it's the same thing in dentistry. I mean, the, the, the dentist, uh, they think they're all that in a bag of chips. But they have to tell three people they need a cavity before one gets fixed. And then they spend all their time learning about how to do the best cavity in the world. It's like, dude, you don't even remove the decay two out of three times. How come when three Rachel, how come when Rachel brings in her three babies, only one of them will get treatment and the other two walk out the door when I can go find another dentist's office in your same zip code where two out of three people get the fillings? And so we know one out of three will never get anything done. But how come some dentists can only get one out of three, the way they present the treatment, the way they project yeah. trust, the way right. they right. don't have right. staff turnover, the way they look at the facility? I mean, high te- a high-tech dental office isn't a CBC. They don't know the difference between a CBCT and a Pano. Not one patient in the world knows that a Pano is 2D and a CBCT is 3D. They right. look at high-tech. Did you use an intro camera? Does the office look professional? Does it, does it look... Does it look like a place I would let someone do surgery on me? Because dentistry right. is all, all, um, it's all surgery. And, what and, I, w- and I would argue, in addition to getting that message across in the practice, they can get that message across via social media every day. And so when the patient comes in, they have more trust. They're more likely to do um, those procedures because you've been educating them all along. And I'm not just saying you're educating them. That's all you're doing on social media. But 365 days, you've got lots of days to entertain them and throw in the occasional, you know, here's what you need to know about social or about dentistry so that uh, when you do come in, uh, it's it's a no brainer. We're we're telling you what's needed in terms of your treatment because we care about you, um, not because we're trying to take you to the bank. So tell us what you've learned. Oh my God, we've gone way over. But just final question. We're we're like seven minutes over. Um, I could talk to you for forty days and forty nights. But how do oh. dentists make decisions? How do they purchase? What have you learned so far? Oh, wow. Well, certainly I already mentioned that price is always at the bottom where most of our uh, dental clients think it's at the top. I will say, Howard, I feel like I'm one of the most unique people in, um, and I say this humbly, but uh, in dentistry because I've seen so many research studies on how dental professionals make decisions when choosing between different dental manufacturers. Unfortunately, a lot of that information is confidential and I can't share it, but a couple of my studies are um, public. And this one, I think, definitely relates to you. So there's one study that we did, and I can send it over to you. Um, We were trying to understand how dental professionals make decisions. And in this particular scenario, the thing that came back as most important was, I need new patients. If you can help me get new patients, um, then I'm I'm interested in hearing what you have to say. So this particular company was trying to uh, add value to the products that they were offering uh, and um, and interestingly enough, this product was not about new patients, and so they did some changes to it to um, to show how they could help a practice get new patients, and that made all the difference in the in the well, world. Well, they're driving- so you say you say you won't change products, but if some product could help you to bring in a whole slew of new patients, you'd probably make a you would consider it, would well, you not? They're, they're driving right now. Tell them there's 50 categories on Dental Town. Um, post it on uh, Dental Town and say. Okay. Um, so yeah, I was doing a podcast, Howard, and he told me to post that. That way you won't think you're selling or spamming or anything. Uh, what would you want? Would you want to put it under under marketing? Um, I, one of the categories is marketing. Another one is uh, our dental products. Yeah, probably dental products. Or would you want to put it under manufacturer feedback? Yeah, manufacturer feedback. That's perfect. Okay, I like let's that do it under manuf- So that. you're driving to work right now. Um, uh, and uh, she'll post that under manufacturer. Say, Howard told me to do it. But hey, uh, congratulations on your book. Thank and, uh, you, Howard. Thanks for being my uh, social media mentor for over a decade. I know everybody on the team, uh, Lori Zalowski, the president of our company, uh, 
Everyone loves Rachel. And uh, thanks for all you do for dentistry. And uh, I hope to see you next year at the Yankee when they move the date to uh, May or October. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for all you do for dentistry, Howard. It's really been a pleasure. Enjoy your Memorial Day.